truth, it's what we seek our entire lives. But what happens when a man dedicated to cold, hard facts encounters something that challenges everything he believes? This is the extraordinary story of Dr. Jeffrey Lang, a brilliant mathematician, a tenured professor, and a committed atheist who set out to disprove the Quran using the language he trusted most, mathematics, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1980s. In a quiet university library, a young professor sits alone, surrounded by stacks of books and papers. His name is Jeffrey Lang, and as a rising star in mathematics at the University of Kansas, he believes only in what can be proven through formulas, equations, and logic. Born to a Catholic family, Lang had rejected religion as a teenager. By the time I was 18, he would later write, I had become a confirmed atheist. To me, religion was superstition, a crutch for the weak-minded. But on this particular evening, something unusual sits on his desk, an Arabic text that would become both his greatest challenge and his unexpected salvation. What makes a man who has devoted his life to pure reason suddenly question everything he believes? What mathematical patterns could possibly exist in an ancient text that would convince a skeptical academic mind? And why has this story been hidden from so many of us in the West? The answers might surprise you, and they begin with a simple challenge that Dr. Lang could not resist. It started with a conversation, the kind that changes lives. While teaching at the University of Kansas, Dr. Lang found himself in a heated debate with a Muslim student who made an extraordinary claim. The Quran, insisted the student, contains mathematical patterns that cannot be explained by human authorship. Lang scoffed at the idea. As a mathematician, he'd heard all sorts of pseudoscientific claims about divine patterns. But as the student continued, something caught his attention. The Quran, the student explained, maintains perfect numerical balances that would be impossible for a 7th century author to create intentionally. Lang's scientific curiosity was piqued, though his skepticism remained firm. Bring me this book, he said. Confident that he could expose any so-called divine mathematics as mere coincidence or selective data. Little did he know that this challenge would lead him down a path of discovery that no equation had prepared him for. When the student brought him an English translation of the Quran, Lang approached it with the cold, calculating eye of a mathematician. He was not interested in its poetry or its teachings, only in proving that its supposed mathematical miracles were nothing but cherry-picked statistics for context, you should understand that the Quran was revealed in the 7th century to Muhammad, a man who, according to historical records, could neither read nor write. It was preserved meticulously, first through oral tradition, and then written down with extraordinary care to preserve every letter and word exactly as revealed. This is crucial, because what Dr. Lang was about to discover hinged on the precise counting of words, a precision that would have been impossible to plan without modern computational tools. With pen in hand, calculator ready, and a confidence bordering on arrogance, Dr. Lang began his analysis, certain that science would triumph over superstition. Dr. Lang began methodically, applying the same rigorous approach he used in his mathematical research. First, he needed baseline data, a statistical overview of the text. He started with simple word counts, expecting random distribution as you would find in any human-authored book. But the patterns he began to uncover left him puzzled. The word days yom in Arabic appears exactly 365 times in the Quran, precisely the number of days in a year. Interesting, he thought, but perhaps coincidental. He dug deeper. The word month shab appears exactly 12 times, the number of months in a year. Another coincidence? Maybe. Then came more complex patterns. Words with opposite meanings appeared with striking balance. Life and death each appear exactly 145 times. Benefit and corruption, 50 times each. Paradises and hellfire, 77 times each. As a mathematician, Dr. Lang understood probability. One such balance might be coincidence. Two might be lucky, but dozens of such precise patterns. The statistical improbability began to trouble his atheistic certainty. But there was more, much more. Dr. Lang discovered that the 19th letter of the Arabic alphabet, Kof, appears precisely 342 times in the Quranic chapter that is named after it. Surah Kof, 342 is exactly 19 multiplied by 18. 
The first revelation of the Quran Surah al consists of exactly 19 verses and contains exactly 285 letters, 19 multiplied by 15. The first verse of the Quran, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, contains exactly 19 Arabic letters. The word Allah, God, appears in the entire Quran exactly 2,698 times, 19 multiplied by 142. For Dr. Lang, these findings were becoming increasingly difficult to dismiss as mere coincidence. The mathematical precision was remarkable for any text, let alone one from the 7th century, authored by a man who could neither read nor write. As his research deepened, Dr. Lang began to feel the foundation of his atheism crack beneath the weight of mathematical evidence. Three months into his research, Dr. Lang found himself working late into the night, surrounded by notebooks filled with calculations and Arabic-English dictionaries. What had begun as a quick exercise to disprove religious claims had evolved into a comprehensive mathematical analysis. He expanded his study to include more complex patterns. One striking discovery involved the Quran's description of the orbits of the sun and moon. Chapter 36, verse 40 states, It is not permitted for the sun to catch up to the moon, nor can the night outstrip the day, each swims in an orbit. Dr. Lang noted that the Arabic word for sun shams appears in the Quran exactly 33 times, the word for moon Quran appears exactly 27 times, and the word for orbits falak appears exactly 60 times. As an educated man, Dr. Lang immediately recognized the significance. The sun rotates on its axis approximately every 33 days at its equator. The moon orbits the earth every 27 days, and the earth makes one complete orbit around the sun every 365 days, roughly 12 lunar months or 60 weekly cycles. How could a 7th century text contain such precise astronomical information, encoded in the exact frequency of word usage? The probability of this occurring by chance was virtually zero. Then came the structural analysis. The Quran consists of 114 chapters, 19 multiplied by 6. The total number of verses in the Quran is 6,236, 19 multiplied by 328. The middle chapter of the Quran is Surah al-Hadid, iron, which is the 57th chapter. The Arabic word for iron is mentioned exactly 19 times in the Quran. Modern science tells us that iron has an atomic weight of 55.85, approximately 56, and the sum of the chapter number 57 and its verse count, 29 is 86. The atomic number of the element radium, which results from the radioactive decay of uranium, much like iron is formed at the core of stars. For Dr. Lang, these connections between mathematics, science, and a 1,400-year-old text were becoming increasingly difficult to attribute to coincidence. He calculated the probability of even a handful of these patterns occurring randomly. The numbers were astronomical, literally less likely than winning multiple consecutive lotteries. Yet there he sat, a trained mathematician, staring at evidence that challenged everything he believed about the origin of the Quran. By now, Dr. Lang was experiencing something familiar to many men in midlife, a profound intellectual and spiritual crisis. The mathematical patterns he'd uncovered were forcing him to reconsider questions he thought he'd answered decades ago. If these patterns were real and not statistical manipulation, and his rigorous methodology convinced him they were real, then how did they get there? How could a 7th century text contain mathematical structures that would require computer analysis to design intentionally? One evening, while analyzing Surah ar rahman the Most Merciful, Dr. Lang set down his pencil. His hands were trembling. He would later describe this moment in his memoir. I sat back in my chair and stared at the ceiling, my mind racing. If this book wasn't authored by Muhammad, then who authored it? The mathematical precision I was seeing would require knowledge far beyond 7th, 5th century capabilities. As a mathematician, Dr. Lang couldn't escape the logical conclusion. If these patterns were real, and if they could not have been created by a human author 1400 years ago, then there was only one remaining explanation, one that his atheistic worldview had no room for. That night, Dr. Lang did something he hadn't done since childhood. He prayed, God, he whispered. If you're real, if this book is from you, help me understand. 
The next morning, Dr. Lang continued his research with renewed purpose. No longer was he trying to disprove the Quran's mathematical patterns. Now he was exploring them with an open mind, following the evidence wherever it led. This is where many men find themselves in middle age, faced with evidence that challenges their long-held beliefs, forced to reconsider foundational assumptions about life, truth, and meaning. For Dr. Lang, the mathematical patterns in the Quran weren't just interesting statistical anomalies. They were a direct challenge to his intellectual integrity. Could he, as a mathematician and a truth seeker, ignore evidence simply because it led to a conclusion he had previously rejected? This question would haunt him for weeks, as he continued to uncover more and more mathematical structures in the ancient text. The turning point came, unexpectedly, while analyzing the mathematical structure of Surah al eklis one of the shortest chapters in the Quran, Dr. Lang had a profound realization. This chapter, just four verses long, is considered equivalent to one-third of the Quran in its importance. It establishes the concept of the absolute oneness of God, a mathematical concept, if you will, of pure unity. Dr. Lang noticed that this chapter contains exactly 47 letters and uses exactly 15 unique Arabic words. He had recently been working on prime numbers in his research at the university and immediately recognized both 47 and 15 as significant numbers in mathematics. 47 is a prime number, divisible only by one in itself, reflecting the chapter's message of God's indivisible nature. And 15 is the sum of the first three prime numbers, 2 plus 5 plus 7, which relates to the chapter representing one-third of the Quran's essence. For Dr. Lang, this was the final piece of evidence. The mathematical structure was too precise, too meaningful to be coincidental. As a mathematician, he could no longer deny the implication the Quran contained knowledge that transcended human capability in the 7th century. In his memoir, he writes, it was like discovering an advanced computer code hidden in an ancient manuscript. The precision and intricacy of the mathematical patterns in the Quran convinced me that this book had an author with knowledge far beyond any human capacity 1400 years ago. On a spring morning in 1982, after months of analysis and soul-searching, Dr. Jeffrey Lang made his declaration of faith and converted to Islam. The mathematician who had set out to disprove the Quran had instead been convinced by it, not through emotional appeal or cultural pressure, but through the language he trusted most mathematics. As he would later explain, I came to challenge the Quran with mathematics, but mathematics led me to the Quran. Today, Dr. Jeffrey Lang is a respected professor of mathematics at the University of Kansas. He's authored several books about his journey, including Even Angels Ask and Struggling to Surrender, which have guided countless others on similar paths of discovery. His story reminds us of something profound. Truth often finds us when we're looking for something else entirely. Sometimes the most powerful discoveries come when we challenge our deepest assumptions. Dr. Lang continues to approach Islam with the mind of a mathematician, analytical, precise, and evidence-based. But he now balances this with something his equations never captured, faith. In lectures around the world, he often tells audiences the mathematical miracle of the Quran wasn't designed to convert mathematicians. It was placed there as one of many signs for those who choose to see. The Quran itself seems to predict men like Dr. Lang, stating, We will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. Quran 41:53. For Dr. Lang, the mathematical patterns were just the beginning. Once he opened himself to the possibility that the Quran might be divine in origin, he began to find wisdom in its teachings that addressed the deeper questions of human existence, questions that his mathematical formulas never could. His journey from skepticism to faith was not abandoning reason, but following it to its logical conclusion, even when that conclusion challenged everything he thought he knew. And perhaps that's the most powerful lesson from Dr. Lang's story. True wisdom comes not from clinging to our beliefs in the face of contrary evidence, but from having the courage to follow truth wherever it leads, even if it takes us to places we never expected to go. As Dr. Lang himself writes, the greatest miracle of the Quran is not that it contains mathematical patterns that would be impossible to design without computers. The greatest miracle is that once those patterns led me to the Quran, I found in it the answers to questions I hadn't even thought to ask. If you'd like to explore the mathematical miracles of the Quran further, I've included links to Dr. Lang's books and research in the description below.
And if you found this story meaningful, please share it with someone who might need to hear it.